Denver Broncos general manager George Payton and new head coach Sean Payton, they seem like they're on the same page heading into the 2023 NFL Draft. How are they planning to approach day one of the draft without a first or second round pick? You get that and much more on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome into a brand new episode of Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country for tuning in and making Locked On Broncos your first listen of the day, every single day. Special mile high salute to everybody in Broncos country who is an everyday listener of the show. Make sure you drop that in the comment section on YouTube or tweet us on Twitter so we can recognize you for listening to us every single day. Thank you so much, Broncos country. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Go to HelloFresh.com slash NFL60 and use code NFL60 for 60% off plus free shipping. I'm your host as always, Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter for Mile High Sports. Joined alongside as always by my co-host, my good friend, Sarah Benninger site expert predominantlyorange.com Sarah we had a record breaking lengthy uh, po- pre-draft press conference with George Payton and Sean Payton on Thursday in Dove Valley and there were some questions asked some interesting ones some that made us scratch our head a little bit but ultimately I think we got a little bit of insight about maybe what the Broncos draft strategy may be from a philosophical standpoint with George Payton and with Sean Payton really on the same page which I think is probably the most important aspect of this leading up to the draft Right, Cody. As as we know, if you've ever used HelloFresh before, I'm glad you brought it up. I, I've loved getting to utilize new ingredients, different ingredients. I think we kind of got an indication from Sean Payton and George Payton that a good NFL draft class, it's not just about the ingredients that you have. It's say, hey, we want to make this dish what do we need to get in order to put that together? And I think that comes with just this level of collaboration that people seem to doubt. I think a lot of people, Cody, want to paint this picture of like, okay, here's the hierarchy in Denver, but a great picture of the working and, and I think even d- developing friendship, you know, relationship between George and Sean Payton here. And of course I say George and Sean Payton, and we know it's spelled differently and all those different things, but George and Sean, you saw when, when Sean Payton kind of called out, Hey, this press conference is getting super long. You could see George Payton break character a little bit be, as, as to say like, Hey, like uh, he's going to say the stuff that I've not always been willing to say. These guys complement each other extremely well, Cody. I don't think it really matters matters like who's who's making the final decision if uh, I heard somebody ask if if it comes down to you guys like different players who's making the final pick they refuse to 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 answer that question by saying well it's going to be me I'm the GM or well it's going to be me I'm the head coach they're they're going to collaborate together in this whole draft and I love what they said that that the decisions that get made on draft weekend they typically happen in the weeks leading up so they're already having those meetings they're having those discussions of like hey how do we get on the same page on this guy or if these two guys are on the board uh, and and we want one or the other what are we going to do here are we going to try to trade back are we going to go up for this guy instead do we like him better I know that a lot of times you don't get much from the pre-draft press conferences but you do get quite a bit from reading the guys' body language and if people are wondering out there hey what's the working relationship between these two guys like like is it going to all blow up after the draft are are they not going to be able to work together I don't get that vibe at all. I kind of feel like actually the more time goes on, Cody, I feel like these guys are they're not just on the same page, but I think they kind of really like each other. I think they complement each other very well. No, I'm in agreement with you, and I think it's a good thing, too, because people act like, and they even touched about this, like Sean Payton touched about it with his time in New Orleans with Mickey Loomis. There were times where they didn't agree on things, but those disagreements wouldn't happen on draft night. It's in those meetings, as you alluded to, where, okay, we're watching tape on this guy. I feel strongly about him. This is where I feel like he should be on our board, and "Ah, I don't quite see that, but there's conversations, there's collaboration, and there's also some other input as well from the area scouts. I mean, it is a full-on collaborative approach to the point where it's like, all right, hey, consensus-wise, this is where we are at as a team, 
it never gets to the point where on draft, I'm like, no, I didn't like that. I think too many people get caught up in the whole draft day movie and some of the situations that you see there. It's rare that ever happens in the NFL because it is a process. And I'm excited to see how it all plans out. But I think everybody's wondering, okay, well, hey, the draft is next Thursday. It's going to be on ESPN. It's going to be on NFL Network. How are the Broncos approaching day one of the draft without a first or second round pick? Well, George Payton said it. He said it clear as day. We're approaching the draft as if we're picking that day. And I would be concerned, Sarah, to be honest with you, if they weren't approaching the draft from that standpoint, as if like, ah, you know, we don't have a pick, so we're just going to turn on Russell Wilson highlights once again. We're going to, you know, look at maybe some of John Elway's greatest highlight plays as well and just see where things kind of fall for us in terms of the draft on maybe day two or day three. It's not going to be like that. And so I think it, it's fair to ask the question, could we maybe see Denver potentially move up? And and even to the point, Sarah, where they were asked, you know, could you trade up? Could you move back? George Payton, Sean Payton, they opened up the press conference by saying, we could have more picks, we could have less picks. And, I mean, we could interpret that for whatever it may be. But, you know, all options are on the table right now for the Broncos. It's important, I think, for everybody to consider We don't know what's going to happen until things start happening. The draft has to begin in order for us to understand what type of movement may occur. So they are very much on the same page, which is great. Uh, They even said that they're doing mock drafts like everybody else's. And George Payton said, it's hard to mock a third round, but we're giving it a go. And to be honest with you, it's, it's very true. It's hard to project maybe how everything's going to fall because as you and I have pointed out in our mock drafts that we've done, you know, a player who's projected to go, you know, 67th overall may not even go in the top 100, could go later, could go earlier in the sense there. So I, I like where Denver is at here. I think they have a pretty good process in place. And I think it was even important to Sean Payton and George Payton even acknowledge like, hey, we're going to build this team based on what we feel like is going to fit the scheme of what we are doing on the football field. Ultimately, that's what matters. I really I love that they said that. And I think that absolutely you look at this in terms of when you're talking about, hey, being ready in the first and second round. Look, a lot of people out there may not realize because I, I, I get I get comments about this every so often, Cody, if you write something or you go on Twitter and you start asking about, you know, the 2024 NFL draft. I think it, I don't think a lot of people realize the Broncos have extra picks in the third, fourth and fifth round of the 2024 NFL draft. Remember that trade with Sean the, with the Saints for Sean Payton. It, it sent a second rounder next year going to the Saints, but it brings a third rounder back as well. So the Broncos not only back on the board in round one next year, but also twice in round three, four, and five. So they have that capital to, to move up. Like a lot of people think, well, the Broncos can't move up. They don't have draft picks. Pick 67 and 68 is roughly worth a, a pick in the low to mid 40s on the NFL draft board in terms of what trade value charts you talk about. And Sean Payton even referenced that. He said, you got to be, if you're talking trade with another team, you have to be speaking the same language in terms of like the value chart. So there is one uh, that circulates out there that tends to be pretty accurate depending on, uh, unless you're talking about trading up for a quarterback, then you can kind of almost throw that trade value chart into the, into the garbage and just be like, you know what? It's a quarterback. We're giving up four first round picks or whatever it is. But if you're trying to move up for a specific guy in round two, say the Broncos could get into the top 10 of round two. If they wanted to get into the back end of round one, Cody, you trade pick 67, you trade pick 68, you trade, you know, maybe you throw a player in there. Maybe you throw a future third in there. Like if they're that desperate for a guy and if they feel like he can be an impact player, they could go for that and they could make it happen. It's not impossible by any means. And there's always going to be at least one team out there that's willing to deal. Sean Payton even said that. He's like, getting getting draft capital is easy, right? He's like, you can trade back if you want. But but other than that, you know, you really have to just be mindful about which players you're targeting if it's someone, like he said, you really want. And we're going to find out. I mean, as Gary Kubiak always says, we've adopted the phrase on the show, we are fixing to find out next week. The NFL draft begins on Thursday. We'll see if the Broncos make any moves. But speaking of someone in terms of making moves, a player whose name has been often linked at various points of this offseason, the trade rumors, general manager George Payton and Sean Payton, they each gave an update on Jerry Judy and how they view him. Can we read into it, or is it definitive? You'll get that on today's episode of Lockdown Broncos. This episode of the show is brought to you by our friends over there at Built Bar. And something exciting is coming to Built.com on April 22nd. I don't have all the details yet, but the excitement is real, and it's something that you won't want to miss out on. If you know how Built works, they have the most incredible protein bars in the world, and they do these amazing flavor drops with unreal flavors in limited quantity. So mark your calendars and head to Built.com on Saturday, April 22nd, to be one of the first to discover what the high 
hype is all about. I can't wait to see what this new flavor is, so make sure to use promo code LOCKEDON15 at checkout, and you'll get 15% off your order at Built.com. We are fixing to find out, Cody, just how big of a, you know a part in the Denver Broncos' future, their future plans, their future roster, how big of a part of that is Jerry Judy going to be, right? The former first-round wide receiver has been the subject of a lot of different rumors in the 2023 offseason. A number of teams even seemingly getting close to trading for Jerry Judy. We heard at the NF- annual NFL meetings last month that you know, Sean Payton is like, you know, basically we're not trading him. George Payton really kind of reiterated the same. Now, with one week before the NFL draft, before the Broncos are slated to be on the clock at least, we now have a new verbiage from Sean Payton, right? He he once again stated, you know, uh, we like Jerry Judy. He's going to be here. But that came after he said we don't anticipate doing anything with him. That's a quote. We don't anticipate doing anything with him. I'm interested to know, Cody, your thoughts as you watch the presser when George said that. Did did it kind of just seem like, oh, he's just that's just how he speaks? Or did it kind of seem like he was changing his tune a little bit when he got asked about Jerry? Obviously, this question came with the context of what are you doing about the fifth year option as well? It wasn't just a, you know, trade rumors question, but kind of all encompassing on Jerry Judy. What was your read on George Payton's response? Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I'm glad you brought up the fifth year option because if you weren't to do that, if like they haven't, they think it's till May first to decide whether or not. So after the NFL draft or before, we're going to find out if Denver's going to pick up his fifth year option. I mean, really, Thursday's draft next week is going to be very telling. If they move him or if they keep him, it's like okay, hey, you know what? Things look like they're firm. Jerry Judy will be a Bronco. He, they did say that, right? It was like operating on the assumption that he will be a Bronco. But I, I want to rem- remind people of you know what you get like you're never going to get like true brutal honesty and sometimes if you're getting that like with Sean Payton saying we're not trading those guys sometimes we're like huh does he really mean that right we we don't know and, and I think we have confidence right now that probably the wide receiver room is staying intact they're not going to trade Jerry they're not going to trade Cortland but I want to remind everybody of what was said uh, I believe it was by Cliff Kingsbury if I'm not mistaken in the Arizona Cardinals when it came to Josh Rosen remember he's like Josh is our guy or, you know, he's our okay. guy. We're not doing anything. So it's like, what do you believe during this time of the year where all these conversations are likely happening behind closed doors uh, internally? And it seems like with the Broncos specifically, while they're having conversations about prospects and maybe players in general, the decision-making process and those related conversations really seem to be boiling down to George Payton, Sean Payton, and Darren Muji, those are the only three guys that are really mentioned as the top guys who stay in the team room, the draft room, while you know position coaches break out with scouts and they talk about players and they highlight, okay, this is what we're looking for schematically, uh, things like that. So when it comes to like Jerry Judy, I mean, Sarah, I, I don't believe that they're going to trade him, but I do always want to throw caution out there to everybody. We hear people say things all the time. We're not trading this guy. We're not moving on. And then we've seen the opposite happen. So, you know, until the draft passes and Jerry Judy's still in Denver, I do think that, hey, there is a possibility that a trade could still potentially be on the table considering if it's the right fit, if it gives the Broncos the value maybe that they're looking for. But I also want to throw this out there, Sarah. I mean, if you're an NFL team, would you trade a first-round pick for a guy who after this year is going to be a free agent anyways? Like, there's so much risk associated with that. And especially with a player like Jerry, who if that were to happen, I mean, he could test the market. He could essentially go anywhere he wants to after, you know, once he becomes a free agency. So to me, I think you have to consider all those options here if you are the Broncos. Yeah, and I think if you are a team that's looking to trade for Jerry, here's the here's kind of the outlook. And this kind of goes both ways in terms of the leverage, right? You're looking at that as another team and you're trying to convince the Broncos what you just said. Like, well, he's on the he's on the last year of his rookie deal. He kind of just had a breakout for you guys at the end of last season. Like, we, we'll be willing to go as high as a, a mid-second round pick or a second and change, but not a first round pick. And the Broncos, their perspective, they're like, Okay, yeah, he's in the last year of his deal, but you guys could pick up his fifth year option and get two years out of this. Plus, you could franchise tag him down the line if it comes to that, and you could get three years out of him. And you're trying to sell us short in terms of the draft compensation, which is ultimately why, hey, a deal may not come to to pass here, and it may end up being a situation where it's just better for the Broncos to keep him. But if I was a, let's say the Giants, because they've been connected to this this rumor mill quite a bit, Cody. 
if I'm the Giants, I'm sitting there at 25. I've done a ton of mock draft scenarios over the last handful of weeks. Every time I get to that Giants pick, I sit there and I think to myself, what are these idiots doing not trading for Jerry Judy? Who is on the board that you think is going to be so good that he's better than Jerry or that you won't give up 25 for Jerry? And I think that that's one of those things that's like it, it, it pulls you in so many different directions. It's like I want Jerry Judy to be the, the player that we all know he's capable of being in Sean Payton's offense. And then at the same time, you kind of realize – where the Broncos have invested financially, are they going to be able to pay Jerry in the next couple of years to get him that contract extension and say, look, we want you to be a cornerstone piece of this franchise going forward. When at this point, it's been really tough sledding for him, you know, with either either drops in his rookie season or, you know, injury in year two or inconsistency and really, quite frankly, horrendous quarterback play that has affected his ability to really shine in the offense. All of these different factors kind of lead you to this point of the, the, you can tell why Jerry is the subject of trade rumors and why they're not going away and why I don't think they will go away. Sean Payton and George Payton, they both said, hey, we got to prepare just like we're picking in round one or round two. This might be the way that they end up actually, you know, if they're being attentive, maybe this is the way they get into round one at, at the end of all things. Well, usually these pre-draft pressers, you know, we get some good insight. We're like, okay, we, we maybe understand what their philosoph, you know, philosophical approach is to the draft. But it's also like they do. There's a, so much misdirection, right? They'll lay out these breadcrumbs, and you're trying to figure out where does it lead to. And at the end of the day, it leads to nowhere. You know, there's that uh, Metallica song. You know, it was referenced on uh, Hard Knocks, where it's like. You know, you see the light at the end of the tunnel, but it's a train, right? So maybe these breadcrumbs are like, you know, okay, we're going to lead them into the, the tunnel here. And then by the time they get to the last one, they realize, hey, that's not light at the end of the tunnel. That's an incoming train. Uh-oh, we're in trouble here. There, the media obviously has its place, and there's a lot of influence in the media in terms of, you know, when something gets said, it can get amplified. As we see on Twitter, some of the answers that, you know, were given, there's maybe minimal context add to it, right? Maybe it's like two sentences, but it's like, wait. What did he say that in reference to? So there's a lot of misdirection in the media game as it pertains to maybe some of the things that are said. But ultimately, what will tell us everything we need to know about the 2023 NFL Draft is what the Broncos do, whether it's on day one, day two, and round three when they're on the clock at pick number 67 and 68. We will find out soon what the Broncos' philosophy is. And maybe referencing back to this pre-draft presser, what aligned and what did in the line, and we can maybe determine things in the future based on some of those reference points. With that said, Broncos country, we are eager for your thoughts. When you heard George Payton, Sean Payton talking about Jerry Judy, did you believe that maybe or not like Jerry is safe in Denver? We want to hear from you. Drop it in the YouTube comments down below. Or if you're listening on your favorite audio podcasting platform, share it with us on Twitter at Cody Work NFL, at Sarah Bettinger, at Locked on Broncos. On today's episode of the show, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into this as well in terms of the pre-draft press conference. How might the Broncos approach picking in round number three if they don't get into round one or round number two? You'll get that on today's episode of the show. Real quick, Locked On NFL's mock draft special is here and it's bigger than ever. You can follow along all 32 teams' first pick in a six-episode ultimate mock draft experience only Locked On can deliver all episodes are available now on Locked On NFL Draft on YouTube or wherever you listen to your podcast. Make sure you tune into that after this so you can find out where we went with the Denver Broncos selection at pick number 67. And I just want to say, the production on this damn thing is amazing. So check it out, Broncos country. It is a great feat. If you love NFL football, the Locked On NFL Mock Draft Special, available on YouTube or your favorite podcasting platforms. How might the Denver Broncos approach picking in round number three if they stay put at pick number 67, pick number 68? We got some insight from George Payton. We got some philosophical thoughts from Sean Payton as well as they kind of gave a little bit of a history lesson as well as maybe how they may operate going forward. Thank you so much, Broncos country, for tuning in and making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day on your favorite audio podcasting platform or whether you watch us on YouTube. We appreciate you so much. Shout out to the everyday listeners in Broncos country. Sarah, continue on with our conversation after George Payton and Sean Payton's pre-draft NFL press conference, taking a look at some of the things that were mentioned there. We've analyzed a little bit their, you know, their approach on day one, what that looks like. We've talked about Jerry Judy, but if they stay put in round number three, how might they approach things? I felt like George Payton had some interesting things to say about that. 
He did, Cody, and it's starting with the fact that he said it's hard to get impact players in round three, and I think that that's something to keep in the back of our minds as we talk about the potential of trading up, trading back, which I know we're going to talk about a lot more in the coming week as the draft approaches, but I think also, too, Peyton talked about the fact that you have plans for all these different guys, right? De depending on where you're selecting and the players that you're targeting at that specific pick, you have, let's say in year one, your plan for them is backup and special teams. Year two, you view them as a potential starter. That can impact, like he talked about, whether or not you move up for a guy, whether you say, like he he referenced Greg Dulcich a number of times, whether you say you look behind your, your selection slot a couple of spaces and you say, hey, we feel like we can get Dulcich five picks later. You move down, you get an additional pick or two. You pick the same guy that you wanted anyway. That approach plays really well in round three. And it's like George Payton has said before, Cody, that's the round where he likes to make make some hay, right? He wants to make hay in that third round because what are what are his picks at this point in round three? He's done pretty darn well. Obviously, Quinn Miners, Baron Browning, you get those two guys in 2021. You get Dulcich in 2022. I mean, those are maybe his three best picks outside of Pat Sertan, the second up to this point. And I know it's only two drafts, but the third round has been kind to George Payton. And so it's yes, like he said, it's not always necessarily about you, you're getting this impact player or you're getting somebody who's going to start for you year one, which is something that I think a lot of you know, us in Broncos country, we needed to hear because that's going to be the expectation for this guy is like, well, he's the team's top pick or he was, they were picked back to back at the top of the third round. So the expectation is you better come in and start right away. And I don't think that's a fair expectation. I think just letting, letting us know, okay, tier one, there may be a guy that's instant starter tier two. It's like, maybe he's starting by year two or also maybe starting by year three. So that can imp impact and influence a lot in, in the draft preparations. Well, I think Nick Benito is a great example of what you just said, right? Because yes, he was their first pick last year in round number two. And it was at the end of round two and people were like, Oh, he should be starting. You know, how can we, it, it's a process where he's going to develop. Right. And I imagine he's going to be a big part of their plans going into this season. But I do think, yeah, we all sometimes do get caught up in like, well, this guy needs to play right away. Right. We didn't even think like we we're looking at Damari Mathis and Inyomo Azarike. I mean, based on where Inyomo Azarike went, he should have been playing well before Matt Henningsen ever did. But it was Matt Henningsen really getting the first run at the, at the beginning part of the season. And then, you know, Awazarike got in toward the end of the season. We didn't expect Amari Mathis to have to start this year. And look, he blew us all away. He surprised us, which goes to show, like, even if you get a guy in round number four, he could very well be a capable starter for you. It's just about seeing how the development goes, how he fits into the scheme, how he progresses in training camp, how he works in the NFL preseason. And then, you know, when he does get in the regular season, if he's not starting on defense, how is he contributing on special teams? I think people always tend to forget Shelby Harris wasn't who Shelby Harris was with the Broncos because, because he didn't just come in and start a defensive line. He had to earn his opportunity. Same thing with Malik Reed. Same thing with guys in the past like Wesley Woodyard. They made their hay and they cut their teeth on special teams and they came in, they made plays on special teams and then found themselves into the rotation defensively because of what they were able to do on that side of the ball. I want to throw that out there for everybody else. But, you know, another thing that I think is going to disappoint Broncos country, Sarah, we all liked the Behind the Broncos series. Like, we all did. You and I both did. Broncos country liked it. It's not going to happen this year. Like, Sean Payton even mentioned it as well in terms of what is the draft room going to look like? Who's going to be in there? Who's not going to be in there? And he said this. He said, there will be no cameras inside the draft room or strangers. You know, you don't want to take that risk of things getting out and leaking. And they're very close to the vest with that. So, there won't be any cameras. There won't be any strangers in there. But he also gave a little bit of a nod to, to I think, a... For me, as well as a former coach and a, and a player, I've kind of had like a little controversial view on analytics until I understood the bigger part of the picture. A lot of teams use analytics not to make necessarily like the, the big decisions, but it factors in so you have all the information possible. And he gave a special shout out to the analytics department, said he was really blown away at how efficient they are in terms of the data and what the information is that they bring to the table that helps them evaluate these prospects in a bigger magnifying glass I think in the end game here. So like a lot that is being considered here by the Broncos approach with George Payton and with Sean Payton. 
And I think to that point about analytics, Cody, to, to give some specifics, of course, I'm not privy to that information of what they're looking at, but based on the first couple of draft classes that we've had from George Payton, here's a couple of things that I think you can expect from what that analytics team is bringing to the table in terms of informing and educating the draft selections. Number one, uh, we talk about this in jest a lot, but high RAS scores, relative athletic scores, they are looking for these guys that, that are elevated in terms of their athleticism. How many, uh, you know, how many guys close to a perfect 10 on the RAS scale do the Broncos have over the last couple of years? I mean, Pat Sertan, Baron Browning, Quinn Miners, uh, even Nick Benito, uh, very close yeah. there. So you, you can go up and down the list here. That RAS score is very much a part of the Broncos analytics, which they do use. Sean Payton's like, I'm like, I'm sitting in a, a new car and I, I still don't even know yet how to turn on the, the seat heater. <laughs> and, and I think it's a, a brilliant way of putting it because you're, you are looking at, okay, yes, we need to study the film. We need to analyze actual on-field production, but you're also evaluating, okay, what guys uh, do really well coming out of this school or this conference or that this, that, and the other, another big thing besides high RAS score. And of course, on-field production would be was this what was this guy like coming out of high school like was he a high five-star recruit four-star recruit no star recruit how many guys in that 2021 class could we look back on who were five-star recruits coming out of high school it's very very interesting to look back on pat sertan was a five-star recruit baron browning was a five-star recruit then you look at uh in the fifth round caden stearns five-star recruit jonathan cooper five-star recruit you and, and i don't know off the top of my head the 2022 class cody but those types of things matter and i think there's even some references out there now that you can look at to say hey which five-star recruits are in this draft not saying the broncos are going to get every one of them but those are two very important things to consider in this analytics algorithm that the broncos have is of course you know, of course, production and statistics and those things matter. But look for the high RAS guys, which everybody does at this point. Also, look at some guys that were big time recruits coming out of high school because those guys, they have the talent they always have. And they went to the big name school. They got the best coaching. Now, can they put it together at the pro level? That analytics department, I think, is huge in putting that together. Another thing I loved from hearing from Peyton and Peyton uh, was the process about like when they're watching a prospect you know it's not like hey we're, we're not just gonna watch 200 snaps of this guy like he said we were watching a prospect last night and we watched 1200 snaps and it's not just from last year it's from the year prior it's from the year before that it's from his freshman year of college like that's how extensive that they go because they want to see like can this guy fit what growth has he shown at, you know as a player at this position how can he contribute and it's uh, they even mentioned it as well it's using all of that and essentially making a projection for maybe how they will do, right? And I think that's where the NFL draft conversation happens. There's no guarantee that these guys are going to work out if they're in round one, round two. An undrafted guy could come out of nowhere and just blow the socks off the whole operation and say, hey, how come this guy slipped under the radar a little bit? That's what we love about the NFL draft. That's what we love about training camps. That's what we love about the story and about the beauty of the game of football. But with that said, Broncos country, that'll wrap up today's episode of the show here, Lockdown Broncos, on your favorite audio podcasting platform or on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe or follow for free so you never miss out on an episode as soon as it is made available. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. What you can expect on Monday's episode, Lockdown Broncos, Sarah Bettinger and myself, we simulated yet another mock draft, our final mock draft Monday. You'll be very surprised at the results in which the Broncos went in our final mock draft Monday leading up to the NFL draft. Enjoy your weekend. Have a good time. Thank you so much, Broncos country. We love you. We appreciate you. And we'll see you on Monday for a brand new episode of the show.